naturally, I over-caffeinated as a result of having a large food baby. So um, if I talk a little bit too fast, I wholeheartedly apologize. Um, thank you for coming to uh, Do Yo. I'm on the, uh, the planning committee, and it's exciting to see so many of you here and interested in uh, digital marketing, interactive design here in the Valley. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the city of you. So if you just cover your hand over that, I'm actually talking about the city of you, or you can refer to the graphic on my shirt. <coughs> all right. So uh, a little bit of groundwork uh, before I, I start showing you all the, the cool graphics that we have associated with this. The city of you campaign actually got started um, as a result of this two-year, $250,000 federal economic development grant that the university and the city of Youngstown was awarded. Uh, as part of that grant, there was a line item for marketing, and fortunately, uh, the university has a program, a mechanism through which they can uh, create uh, marketing design, and that is my Youngstown Design Works program, which is a student-run graphic and interactive design agency that particularly works with small businesses, startups, nonprofits, and community groups. So, as a part of this project, we were asked to create a publication that documented all of the research that the university was commissioned to do. And um, through a series of, of interesting circumstances, we ended up with this, which was actually not a part of the scope of the project whatsoever. This publication was called The City of Youngstown Strategies for Economic Development. It's available online. It's like 250 pages. It looks nice, but it's a boring read, said with respect. Um, <coughs> so, I talked a little bit about design works. Um, we were commissioned eight thousand dollars for the publication. Um, all of this money that was spent actually goes back into the design works program, which allows our students to purchase new technology or purchase, um, you know, app development equipment or go on some really great uh, experiences relative to to their uh, chosen major. Um, so all that money went back into the design program and we were able to start developing apps for our clients and offer much more robust set of uh, uh, services. Take a, take a gander at this, this blue baby here. Uh, this is the seal of the city of Youngstown, which um, if, if you recognize the seal of the state of Ohio, it's practically the same thing. <laughs> With some minor differences, the text, okay? So, the city actually had no cohesive, identifiable branding to speak of, all right? Um, this is a problem. The lack of identity. A much needed rebranding was in store. With the publication of this book, we wanted to make sure that we had high quality aesthetics that, you know, represented the city well on a national level. And, you know, unfortunately we had to, uh, we had to use um, this guy in, in the booklet, but that is no longer the case. Um, so we, we met the standards of the publication, um, but we didn't want that mediocrity, that perception of mediocrity to exist, all right? Not, no, it sounds mediocre, but, uh, you know, perception being what it is, you look at that graphic, you can't help but think, like, really? We couldn't come up with something? Um, <laughs> So we had an opportunity to innovate and to innovate creatively, which is an opportunity that is ever so rarely afforded at this level, on a, on a citywide level. Okay? Uh, a little bit about me, I'm an outsider. I didn't grow up here, I didn't learn here, I don't live here, I live in Pittsburgh. Um, I have the, the good fortune of being able to uh, teach here and, and be involved in the community in many different ways. Um, but I'm the outsider looking in. And um, I'm still learning, and I'm learning every day, and what I'm learning is that this is a great place. I've known that for a while. But um, I'm invested in Youngstown, its citizens, in you, in this university, uh, to, as full as I can. And that's why I'm wearing the shirt, um, and I wear it frequently. Um, don't come around me, it might smell a little bit. I'm, te I'm teasing, I'm teasing, it's, I've washed it. A couple weeks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, moral of the story, uh, I'm invested, and you can't rebrand a community you do not care about. Um, as much as I, you know, I would hate to see the city put out a request for proposals, 
and it goes out to Cleveland or Pittsburgh to bring in some designers or creative ad agency to rebrand the city, then they're only here for a few weeks uh, or a few days. They know nothing. They know nothing. Um, you can't rebrand a community you don't care about, and you can't truly rebrand a community you don't love. I don't live here, but I love it here. All right, uh, it's my home away from home. I just happen to own a house in Pittsburgh, but I don't love it. There. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are great people here, and through the journeys this campaign has taken me so far, um, I know now know many of them. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces in this room. Um, if you're following along on Twitter, uh, on the hashtag Do You Live, you know, I put out a call like, hey, I want to talk to you, I want to record a podcast with you. We have a City View podcast where I get to go to strangers' houses and have a conversation with them, and I, I don't know anything about them at all. I don't know you, Vincent. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to your house and we're going to have a conversation on your porch. And awesome, see, that's what I'm talking about, that hospitality, that willingness to participate. You don't get that everywhere. But uh, being able to, to meet total strangers and get their story is very, it's just remarkable. I've, I've, throughout the podcast, and for those of you that may have listened to them, I've seen, you know, incredible highs where people have, you know, accomplish their life's goals, or I've seen incredible lows where, you know, I spoke, a, I spoke to a woman who is a survivor of domestic abuse, and it's just the extremes that you see in the middle are, are amazing. So, um, I want to know everyone and connect them all together, so I'm glad you're all here connecting together. <laughs> Sharing stories with each other about their lives, they all have something great to contribute, and we want to discover what those are, because what you do here, what this community has made you, is going to make this community in the future. How you were raised here, what you're doing. Maybe you have a program. Maybe you support, uh, you know, underprivileged youth. Whatever it is, your contributions make this place greater, and that is the soul behind this campaign. So, um, this idea of, of building. You know, I, I use the phrase "build yourself up" or "building is contagious." The things that you do through your Maybe it's your employer, or maybe it's as a volunteer. Um, the things that you're doing are making this place better. You're building a better Youngstown, all right? And this idea of self, you know, of, of, of self-idealization. Who are you in the most ideal sense, okay? Well, in the most ideal sense for me, and I've worked through this, and it took a long time, I am a creative, okay, all right? My, my sole purpose, it feels like, I have to be creating something at all times. If you know me personally, you know how busy I am. Um, and that's why I have to be creative. Not everyone is able to identify that with themselves yet, but being able to do that, now I know like this is, this is my goal here. Um, but building things is contagious, and I'm hoping that uh, you'll, you'll get a bit of that uh, contagion. Accessing your interests how you push this community forward is how it all builds together. So each of us has a story to tell. The City of You campaign gives you the venue to share your story. Share what you're doing to make this place better. All right? I teach graphic and interactive design in the Department of Art, and I tell every single one of my students there is no reason why you have to leave here after you graduate. You can start your career here, you can start a new business, you can do whatever you want in Youngstown. You can live here and commute, okay, fine, but you can start things here, amazing things. And some people are like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't want to deal with this. Like, I'm gone. Okay, go see the world. I've spoken to many people that have left and have come back uh, to do even greater things. But um, whether it's full of highs or lows, each one of you has something to say and about how Youngstown helped you or shaped you as a person or how you are in turn shaping it. Okay, so let me tell you how this came about. <clears throat> I lost my water. There it is. Okay, so um, this, this campaign sort of hit in the most unlikely of places, and, and the title here, New Blood, is very apropos. Um, my wife was pregnant at the time, and we had to do some uh, blood sugar testing uh, very early on a Saturday morning. And I had the, the great fortune of being able to sit in the doctor's office for three hours while they waited uh, for the testing to be complete. And um, I got to thinking about the connections between 
uh, even myself as, as a soon-to-be new father and the connections of, of family and people in the places that they live. And, you know, the people that live here are Youngstown's life force. It, you are its blood. And um, it is built from you. And I thought that was, uh, there was something beautiful about that concept. So, spiritual, nevertheless. But something really, really cool about that. Um, the people of Youngstown give the city its life. Their stories are the foundation of what Youngstown is built on and grows from. And without you, Youngstown would have no soul, no fighting spirit. So, um, I'm aware as an outsider of the perceptions that even you yourself yourself, excuse me, have of the city in which you live, work, play, and learn. And I'm, over time, you know, I would love to be able to change those perceptions. Uh, fortunately, I think the folks in this room generally have a positive uh, uh, perception of, of Youngstown, but there are others that don't. I've spoken to them on the podcast, and it's hard, 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 hard to fight that cynicism. So, um, I'm going to show you some posters in a little bit that kind of break that cynicism. And, and I'll show you how you can apply here. But before I do that, I wanted to just introduce some of the graphic, um, the graphic elements of, of this particular campaign. So this, is, this brand mark is called Alpha, all right? This is actually the new brand mark that the city will use on practically everything. And I love, I just love how this works out. So you'll see this logo on t-shirts, you'll see it on business cards, you'll see it on uh, the sides of buildings or on department letterhead. The first actual place of implementation for this logo, anyone care to venture a guess? The seal. Garbage trucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't have been more excited. Uh, how cool is that? Like, I, I, I had discovered that you know you have the new trash bins with the seal on them, and I was a bit disappointed that I didn't get quite there in time to to change that, but maybe in a few years you'll have this mark on it. But I just love the idea that it's just funny that it's on a garbage truck of all places. But I'm looking forward to seeing them on, on the police cruisers and the fire trucks and things like that. As a designer, um, as a creative, being able to have this, this broad level of impact is remarkable. Like, this is my legacy project. And I say that in the sense that, you know, don't mess with it, it's mine. It's going to transform, it's going to grow, and I have no control over that, and that's fine. But, like, this project, I feel like, is my masterpiece. And they're, it's so cool to be able to say that. Um, so this is, this is Alpha. You'll see it everywhere. And this is Beta. This is the campaign narrative logo. So where this logo is going to be used on all official media, uh, letterheads, newsletters, etc., 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 this is the part um, that you're going to see in the campaign that I'm wearing on my person, okay? Um, you're going to see this everywhere. In fact, when you go down to the M Gallery later, you're going to see a lot of City of You work in that exhibition. On the windows outside of that building, we have this laid out in vinyl. So make sure you get a picture of yourself in front of it. I already did. Uh, without hesitation. Okay. Uh, here's some variations on a theme as to what that branding will look like. A good brand is versatile, all right? It maintains its presence in any environment within which it lives, okay? Um, so being able to have that block there, it sticks out, all right? Um, it stands out, but it means something. It has emphasis, but it has that metaphor behind it. Uh, it's got that soul behind it. I want to talk about the neighborhoods. Um, some of the neighborhoods here, particularly the, the neighborhood groups, some of them have branded themselves. Uh, some of which my students actually had a hand in. Crandall Park North, do I have any residents? No? Uh, how about Old Furnace District? Okay. Um, well, if you didn't like it and you lived there, we can talk about it. Um, but uh, my students did the, the logos here on the left, obviously the ones on the right, uh, they did not do. But I don't want to replace what exists. I'm not coming in saying, you must use this new logo. No, I want the individual neighborhoods to maintain their own unique identity, um, their own unique spirit. I went out to Rocky Ridge uh, a week or so back to one of their uh, community meetings. And... Um, I got a lot of questions. 
a lot of interesting questions, uh, particularly uh, what's a designer, what do you do, and why are you here? Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I was able to, to communicate, like, you know, we're building something special here, it will represent you, but you in turn equally represent it. Uh, without you, it has no purpose, it has no meaning. Um, so, instead of replacing what exists, we want to work in tandem. So, you'll notice that the city of Youngstown mark here on the right, uh, the YOU is in green. This mark, this brand mark, can change its color scheme relative to whatever neighborhood it's in. Do I have any Rocky Ridge folks? Okay, Molly. You will have this shirt, but in green, and dark green interior lettering. Okay, so each neighborhood will have its own color representation inside of this scheme. You know, for, for the, the folks that strictly adhere to brand consistency, I might be driving you a little crazy, but uh, this is like some fun in a creative innovation that, that can play and can work. Here's some further variations on the neighborhood brands. Now, to be clear, I have not figured out a way to get these neighborhoods to identify their own color scheme, let alone agree to one that I may come up with for them. So, uh, Dora, for example, may hate the baby blue and the cyan. Um, they absolutely may hate it and want to use slate gray and black. Okay, that's fine. I want the community to tell me what they're interested in, okay? But uh, there's a lot of liveliness here. Um, I especially love this one, it's just called Transition Zone. Um, it's, just, it's just like a, a bunch of uh, empty dirt lots. <laughs> but I accounted for it, every, every, single, every single detail I want to account for. And obviously not all of the neighborhoods are represented here, but um, it's going to be interesting crossing that bridge. As of right now, working with City Council, we're thinking about Lansing, uh, is it Lansingville Heights? Uh, what's interesting is I interviewed someone that lived there, and they actually pronounced, they actually said Lansing Town, and I corrected them. But ever since then, I've been kind of going back and forth. Regardless, uh, yeah, we're thinking about uh, Lansingville Heights because of the diversity of the population there. We get a wide spectrum of you know different races, ages, income levels, so on and so forth, and we want that to be truly representative of the folks here in the city. Uh, here are beta versions of the logo. So Molly, like I said, eventually you'll get this shirt, but it'll be in green. And what's really cool is you can be walking down Federal with a green shirt on and be like, oh, you live in Rocky Ridge. Or if you go to the exhibition opening tomorrow night, this the shade of blue for the shirts is lighter. So I could say, oh, well, Melissa, you are at the exhibition opening. That's the only time I want to use that color for a t-shirt. So even the t-shirts have these is drilled down a granular identity. Uh, so, uh, some of the advertising concepts, rounds one and two. Uh, do I have any designers or creators in the room? Okay, a couple, all right, so good. So you know that like the, the first ideas typically aren't the ones that you use, all right? Um, regardless of how great they may be, so keep an open mind. These are not terrible, okay? Um, but, uh, the idea here was um, I wanted to create some visuals that uh, realize the full scope of, of the concept of the identity, um, identify the essence, the spirit behind the project, but were also digestible by everyone. Okay, uh, universal, very very different, especially uh, when different languages come into play. It, it's, it can get it can get confusing. So the first the first iteration of this was I can in Youngstown. Does anyone know David? You might have seen him. Yeah, you know David. You might have seen him photographing uh, here today. If you do, say, hey, I saw your picture in an ad. Um, and then compliment him on his very lush beard. Uh, <laughs> simple top-down hierarchy. Uh, we read from top to bottom, left to right. You can see that is configured here in the structure of this ad. Essentially, imagine this as a light post banner. So you can be walking down um, you know, Lincoln, and see this as a light post banner, and you can read David's story. I can play live music, start a record label, go on tour, build an indie cinema, be a dad in Youngstown. These are all things that he has done and is doing. Uh, you see his name uh, right underneath his arm there, and the 
organization that he represents, at which point in time this was the Little Youngstown Cinema. And then you see the City of Youth. Essentially, build yourself in the City of Youth. That's, that's the tagline. Okay. Um, this is the second version. Build your best self in the City of Youth. All right. Um, is it some of this really lofty and ideal? Yeah, but um, you know, I don't think I can communicate anything else. I need I need to set an ideal standard. So, Jared, I'm going to pick on you. Jared's in the third one here on the right. Okay, um, and uh, I can run, guard, and lead in Youngstown. Build your best self in the city of you. Top down hierarchy. Narrative is in, intact. Tells a quick, short story. Um, so you're learning about people as you walk down the street. <clears throat> Jared can study, design, create, and you know, sound, so on and so forth. So Vincent, whatever your story is, your picture can go there, as well as three beats to, to your life's narrative, so to speak. The pitch. Okay, so we reached a point where um, we were ready to present this uh, in a much more formal way to, to the mayor and city council. <clears throat> uh, surprising the mayor with a rebranding effort, uh, drawn out of an approved publication design. I mean, it basically came from nowhere. Uh, mayor now is certainly very welcoming to this opportunity. Um, but he approached it uh, with respect, but a cautious optimism, all right? Um, I'm sure there have been many circumstances where Opportunities like this have come to the fore and presented themselves, but uh, one of the things that I really appreciated with this process was we had a lot of conversations about it, all right? Uh, we talked about the applications, we talked about the people it represented, the neighborhoods, race, income, whatever, we talked about it, and um, it was not an overnight thing. This project has not launched officially. Uh, we're doing little bits and pieces here, but we're over a year and a half into it. Um, and one of the things that I really, really respected about this entire process was that we needed to get buy-in from everyone, all right? It, it felt like it was all or nothing. So if one person, you know, didn't really care for it, like, we had a problem. So we did user testing. We did focus groups at the library. And it went over really well. And one of the great things about the focus groups was that they came with their own ideas that enhanced what we were already doing. Okay? I needed criticism. I was begging for criticism because at that point in time, I was only getting compliments. And that's not a good thing if you're a creative. If it's compliment, 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 and there's no criticism, at a certain point, you don't know if what you made is really any good. Okay? Uh, the two focus groups were for the public, racially diverse, gender diverse citizen leaders. They weren't designers. They didn't have to be. But the campaign concept clicked with them. Um, and now they're buying in on, on a deeper level, and they want to see it implemented in their neighborhoods. So, furthering this buy-in, uh, we need to get trust and approval, okay? Uh, the City View t-shirt is the one that I'm wearing. This is a first-gen t-shirt. Uh, this was made for a public presentation uh, of the rebranding effort at an economic action group that actually occurred at YBI, Youngstown Business Incubator. Uh, the shirts were a massive hit. Uh, we want businesses to actually sell these, so we want to license this artwork out to the businesses. You pay for the t-shirts, you sell them, portion goes back to feed the campaign and keep this thing sustainable. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the funny thing about this is the day of that presentation, I was all ready to go and we had everything in place and then my wife's appendix burst at like 5 o'clock that morning. So I'm sitting in Passman Hospital in the North Hills of Pittsburgh in a just a brutally hot car recording a screen presentation of not only the campaign but the website as well. And somehow, miraculously, both of those things were able to be fit. I recorded both presentations, was able to upload them to Dropbox, have someone here in Youngstown, Nick Cretion, download them. <laughs> get a computer to put them on, and get everything set up, and all he had to do was hit play. And unfortunately, I wasn't there, um, but it was still a big hit. And I like that because uh, that means that the success of the campaign is based on the ideas and not the pitch. Not the pitch. All right? The pitch is important, but if it's intuitive uh, and well-received, then you know it doesn't get any better than that. The last step was for city council to approve this work. 
Uh, they had to fully vet it. Um, we researched, discussed, critique with all of the major stakeholders, um, and then ultimately we went to city council, and um, budget wasn't even discussed, we just needed approval for the ideas. Uh, eventually we did get a budget passed, um, a, a rather uh, large budget, so I'm hoping that you'll see this campaign implemented here for many years to come. Um, I want to talk about <coughs> politics and, and relationships. <coughs> uh, one of the greatest things about working at YSU are the uh, relationships and the ability that, I, not even the ability, but I've come to genuinely care about this community and the people that live here. Uh, I feel at home here. You know, I can go to a stranger's house, Joseph, I can go to your house, and I feel right at home. You don't get that everywhere. You don't get that in Pittsburgh. You don't want that in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but um, I've been told that my passion for the city and this project is inspiring, and that is very, very much appreciated. But this isn't a project for me, it's a mission. This isn't a portfolio piece. This is something else entirely. When you can elevate a project like that, your worldview changes, your inspiration changes, and don't even bother asking me, asking my wife how much time I've put into this and how much time I've taken away from my family to do this. Um, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. I'm all in full tense. Um, so I, uh, I talked about her bladder, her gallbladder exploding. It was her gallbladder. I apologize. Um, but uh, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what's nice is I've got folks I can count on to help me make this bigger, that believe in it just as much as I do. Um, and that scale is, is, is ridiculous. So um, it was approved by uh, city council with a budget of $100,000. Um, and my Young Sun Design Works students will be helping me put this together. So this campaign is effectively student driven. Uh, which is remarkable that, you know, our students have this opportunity to, to have this kind of impact. And I'm hoping that through this entire journey, they'll realize how powerful graphic design and visual communication is, and how powerful it can be to uh, a community. We were fortunate to receive uh, an additional $100,000 from the National Endowment of the Arts. Um, for what is called an R Town grant. Essentially, we're using the campaign to stimulate placemaking uh, in a very creative way. So, one example that I use is in downtown Pittsburgh, in an alleyway, there is a massive uh, screen, probably the height of that wall there. And it just little lights flicker, and you know, you don't even see it when you walk down Liberty. It's not that you have to see it out of the corner of your eye, that's how you access it which that entry point is interesting in and of itself. But when you go down the alley and you see these lights flicker, as soon as you walk past it, uh, it makes like this crazy abstract shape based on the cellular signal in your phone. So it's creating art from technology, and we want to do that here, and we've been enabled to do that through this grant. So next time you're downtown, look for it. Strawberry Way. There you go. You know what I'm talking about. It's awesome, right? Yeah. We can have that here. People think they can't have this here. They can. We've just enabled that. Um, so out of 64 grants, uh, I'm sorry, 64 grants out of 250 applicants, uh, of which we were one, we've never received this grant, and it's going to do some really great things. Now, uh, here are just some pictures. That's the book that we developed for the city. Ignore the seal. <laughs> First gen t-shirts, these were actually printed by an alumni, uh, Chad Campagna, who actually started his business and then moved it to Akron. stay here. Mike Gibson, Topiary artist professional. Um, he, can, he can pitch you after the fact. Mike and I did a long form podcast and I love the situations within which these podcasts occur. So Mike and I met on a super, super hot day in an empty parking lot at Office Depot, right? Is it Office Depot? Yeah, yeah and we sat in my Prius in the air conditioning and recorded this podcast, <laughs> and that was the first one. It was awesome. Uh, it's so impromptu and random. Uh, and, then when we, and then we went behind this Office Depot to take some photos, and he's trimming the bushes back there. And I was thinking, we're gonna get the cops called on. <laughs> uh, you can see Mike's poster at the exhibition. 
everyone that does a long form podcast, they get a poster. So you could be you could be going down federal, and I use federal a lot, but you'd be going down federal, looking friends, coffee shop window, and there's your poster. At the bottom here is a quote that kind of conveys your, your feelings about the city and your place within. Danielle, uh, a dancer, a creative, from Lansing Hill Heights, actually. Carmela, who uh, is here today, so if you see her, say hello, um, and give her crap for not being in here. Uh, <laughs> I love this graphic. First off, I love this graphic because of the intersecting lines and the, the color. You, you don't see the color on the projector, but it's very rich, and it, it's got a texture to it. Um, I love the, the color here and, and this, this harsh grit texture. Um, these posters are not intended to be massive advertisements. Like, you're not going to see this on a billboard, okay? These are meant to be more personalized. So, uh, some of the folks that, you know, Mike, I've got, I'm going to present you your poster tomorrow. So, you get to take that home and you can frame it. If you want me to sign it, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln Williams, uh, just some just awesome photography. And the, the purple here is just, it's great. Um, here are some shots of the show that you'll see later tonight. This is the vinyl lettering. So we're going to do live podcasts, live audience podcasting tomorrow night with John Howe. And there are going to be two bar stool level seats here. And we're just going to have a conversation. And you get to see how it plays out. So we've got a really nice backdrop. Uh, if you're interested in listening to the podcast, you can go to soundcloud.com slash City of View. I just recorded one today with Rob Halowitz, one of the premier sponsors of this event, 20 minutes long. And all we did was bullshit it about marketing and design. It's great. You nerds will love it. All right? Um, Mike, you know, we talked about a number of different things. Uh, there, there are 29 unique podcasts on our, on our station right now, but I have over 100 recorded. You can download the City View app. Uh, it's free, Android and iOS, just type in City of Youngstown, and uh, stay tuned because I'm going to be adding more content to it. Word to the wise, if you go to the show tomorrow and you download the app, the QR scanner is going to be able to, you're going to be able to scan QR codes of uh, basically their links to podcasts. So tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. we're doing a thing called Faces of the Future, where we're photographing young millennial leaders. This was sponsored by a private citizen, and um, we're going to record short form podcasts too. So when I see Tyler's photo on the wall, I'm going to scan the QR code, and then I can listen to your one to two minute story. Um, so it has an interactive component. If you go to cityview.org, you're going to be able to see all of this information and more. And you can follow us on Twitter if you're not following the hashtag, we're at cityofview. Um, and I've been going like crazy on Twitter uh, today. And if you want, you can scan these two codes um, to see the website presentation or this presentation, albeit an older version. Um, otherwise, stay tuned and participate. You're needed. Um, you have something to say, and what you have to say will enrich the work that we're doing. So thank you, everyone. Questions? No clapping. No clapping. Okay.